Hi, this is Peggy Miller, Highland Winds LLC. I'm the medical herbalist that is presenting this podcast series on Chinese and Ayurvedic medical herbalism. Today, I'm talking about the liver and the kidney when it comes to qi. Now, in the last three segments, I've been talking about qi deficiency. And I talked about lungs and heart and spleen qi deficiency and the importance of maintaining your qi levels for your body overall. Now, when it comes to the liver and the kidneys, the problems are slightly different. With the liver, less than an issue of straight qi deficiency, it's qi stagnation. And with the kidneys, it's the inability to receive qi because it, they're improperly nourished and functioning at a low level. And both of those things can be very important to the overall key levels in the body. And that's why I include them here. When you have key deficiency, which is energy deficiency, it can be caused by both the diet and your body's ability to draw up energy from its surrounding, from the earth, uh, from the air. And it the key energy flows on channels through your system much like blood flows in the veins. So key is important. It's what drives the body. It's what keeps everything working. It's sort of like, I mean, the blood's like fuel. The key moves the fuel. Um, and it's it's just very important to, to have at an optimum level. With the liver, the primary thing that causes the problems is key stagnation. When you have a diet that's way too rich in either red meat or pharmaceuticals or alcohol, that alone can cause key stagnation. It pollutes the liver. And the liver is not able to move the key through because it just slows down trying to clear up pollutants uh, coming through. But in addition, when you have too much anger or resentment, that can cause, uh, you basically often hold it inside. If you're angry because of work, uh, you know, your kids, uh, your spouse, something a friend did, it can be anything that causes frustration or anger. And we all have it. So that's a common situation. But it's what you do with the anger. Um, a lot of different things can really help you not to hold it in. When you hold the anger and frustration inside, it slows down. It causes stagnation both of blood and of key. Uh, you can practically feel it if you pay attention. And you'll have immediate impacts. You'll have a stiff back. Your thighs will hurt. Um, your chest will hurt. But it also, over a period of time, increases the emotions that are actually causing the stagnation. When the liver has too much key stagnation, then it builds up blood stagnation because nothing's moving. And then uh, the resultant chemistry from all that not only dumps into the liver, into the stomach causing stomach problems, but it changes the chemistry in your body and in your brain so that you actually have more anger. Uh, and medical herbalists have seen this time and again, when you apply the formulas that help clear key stagnation and blood stagnation in the liver, the person will feel better, just literally feel not as much on edge, not as angry. And so it can really help. And it's important to do not only a liver cleanse. Um, if you see someone, let's say your spouse or a friend is suddenly just way angrier than usual, you know, and it doesn't quite fit. It's probably they're either drinking way too much and it's polluted their liver or they're experiencing deep frustration and not knowing how to release it, not, you know, 
going on enough extra, you know, walks in the woods or getting meditation or getting therapy where they talk it out. All those things can help you release it. Well, if you don't do that, you'll notice that a person is really overreacting to simple things. Life has simple irritants in it. And it's really important that you keep your liver cleansed so that you don't overreact to simple irritants. Um, the kid's doing something stupid, um, which happens, um, or your spouse does, or you do. Um, it, um, people at your job, uh, different things can cause you to just overreact if your liver is stagnant. So you need to cleanse it. Bupleurin formulas are one way to do that. Uh, there's one called Free and Easy Wanderer that you can get um, in pill form. And it includes bupleurin plus other herbs that just help not only nourish the liver, but cleanse it so that it gets the key stagnation out of the way you, um, and really can help. If you don't do this, not only do the emotions increase and then finally switch mainly to depression, but you then also, it dumps the key, the excess of key into the stomach or up to the brain. And if in the stomach, you'll start having stomach problems, nausea, burping, um, churning, feeling, you know, distress. And it's not, sometimes you'll think, oh, I just ate something wrong. It could be your key, the liver needs cleansing. And so the reason it's important, if you can, to seek out a consult with something of this nature is it does become chronic and it does lead to headaches and dry eyes when it goes to the head or stomach problems, but it also increases your inability to handle anger and depression. So really critical that you sort of pay attention. And so if what I'm saying is hitting home and you are feeling these things, you need to do a liver cleanse. The only reason I often talk about teas first and then switch to pills is teas can be stronger. Using the raw herbs and making up the formula and taking a tea for a couple weeks, for three weeks to cleanse. It's just faster and can be more thorough. And then often you switch to pills and use them for a couple more weeks and then keep them on hand to use, you know, when you feel it building again. Let's say you, you often eat grilled foods out, you know, with your spouse or whatever. Um, if you feel that feeling again of getting more on edge, um, more uh, emotions that don't quite fit, uh, it's then just do another liver cleanse. And it can really help not only your life, but help your overall system. Because if you allow the key stagnation to increase, then key doesn't get to the other organs like it should. They suffer key deficiency and they operate at subpar. And then you start experiencing a number of different kinds of physical problems, all relating to you needing to clear the liver. So the liver is really important to maintain, keep the key flowing, keep blood flowing, uh, and also increase key levels to make sure that they are high enough. Think about a river. I often talk about the river, but it's a good example. Um, the, if the water flow is strong, but there's too much debris in the river, it, the debris forms a dam, and then the water can't get through, and it flows some other direction. It just will. And that's what happens with the liver. It then flows to the stomach or flows to the head, and you have other problems there. Let's say there's only a little debris in the river, but the water flow, the key flow is too low. Then it still can't brush aside. It slows down. A little of it gets through, 
but not enough. So downstream where it's needed, they're not getting enough. Um, so the spleen, which needs key energy to do its job and um, that sort of thing, that can all cause difficulty. So it's very important that you recognize these factors. So that's liver key stagnation. Let me clear my throat. <coughs> okay. Now, kidneys, just like the liver, it's not is the problem can be stagnation. The situation that is also um, important with the kidneys is their inability to accept key. When the kidneys are functioning improperly, then it basically um, they can't receive key from the heart or from uh, the liver or the spleen. And when that happens, there are different sy symptoms that result. A shortness of breath, uh, difficulty in inhaling are, are two of the key symptoms of inability for the kidney to receive key. Uh, sometimes you'll see a swelling of the face. Um, and there'll be um, some coughing, a mental listlessness. And these sorts of symptoms can all reflect the kidney um, jing unable to receive key. So what you do when that happens um, with the kidneys is you try to increase, uh, you nourish the kidneys with Romania 6 and Romania 8 because often there will be uh, similarities with the symptoms related to kidney yang deficiency, which is uh, part of the problem. So when this happens, it's important to make sure that the kidneys can receive ki, because if they're unable to, then they will um, not be able to function well and other problems result in the kidney area. So herbs like Romania 8, which help nourish the kidneys overall and help to um, allow them to function well, that can also help the kidneys receive key. So when that does, if you sort of picture a system where the different organs in the body, the heart, the spleen, the liver, the stomach, the kidneys, and the intestines, um, if, if the kidneys can't receive key, then it doesn't move through the, the kidneys well and move on because the kidneys have a direct correlation both to the heart and the spleen. So. When the kidneys aren't functioning well, often you'll see a corresponding problem with the spleen. So when I talk about key deficiency overall, these different organs and how they uh, move the key through them, accept it, keep it from stagnating, shift it to the other organs, all helps the movement of energy through the entire body and helps the whole body function well. So basically, that's key, um, very basically. Um, I hope this has been of some use. Uh, key is important, remember your diet. And remember just those walks in the woods, throwing the eggs at the tree, releasing frustration and keeping your various organs nourished can all help key move well. This is Peggy Miller, Highland Winds. I hope that this was of use to you and there'll be another one next week. You have a good one, bye.